Hello, and today we're going to be talking about another one of the three key ideas that people need to understand when it comes to testing and assessment, and that idea is reliability. So today, you will understand how to make a reliable test, or at least a test that's more reliable than it would have been before you watched today's video. But I want to start with a little exercise. I want you to look at the picture that's going to appear on the screen and give it a mark out of 10. I want you to score it. 10 being the high mark, zero being the low mark. So here's the picture. A durian. There's the durian. What score did you give it? Now, of course, I can't know what you gave it. But what I can be sure of is that everyone watching will be giving it a different score. Why is that? Well, it's because some people might be looking at the colour, thinking, oh, that's a good colour. Or they might be thinking about the shape or the freshness. Or you might be like me and thinking, oh, it's durian. I hate the smell of durian. That's a zero. Similarly, if we chose another fruit, like an apple, and had to score again out of 10, we would all be giving it different scores. Now, we aren't in real life assessing fruit, but what this proves to us is that criteria for assessment are very important. Because otherwise, there is no reliable assessment. So now I'm going to go through four things that are important to bear in mind when it comes to reliability. The first one is that a test is more reliable if it is always given under the same conditions. So a good way to illustrate this is to think of this type of assessment exercise or test, the dictation. Now you can see in this cartoon what the students think of dictation. You can see they're all giving the thumbs down. However, no matter what students think about dictation, teachers still use it and it is often used for assessment or testing purposes. Now that's all very well and good, but this is what often happens still. Someone develops a script for the dictation test and the teachers take the text and they take it to their own class and each teacher reads it to her or his own class. So instantly we have variables at work. Some teachers have louder voices. Some talk faster, like me, or some talk very slowly. Some might unconsciously give help to their students in the dictation through the way they read it to the students. So if this is happening, automatically the results of that dictation assessment are not going to be reliable, simply because it wasn't given to every class in the same conditions. That's the first one. The second one is this. A test is more reliable if the questions and instructions are clear and unamb unambiguous. There are a couple of ways to check this for yourself. One is to ask uh, a friend, a colleague, to read it through and see if it's clear. Even better, maybe she or he might do the test for you and tell you if there are any problems. Second thing to bear in mind with this consideration is it reminds us of the importance of giving students time to practice, to prepare for a real test, doing a mock test in other words. Because if you give students a test and they're totally unfamiliar with the type of instructions, then maybe the fact they get a low mark isn't because they can't do it, but because they didn't understand what they were being asked to do. So a couple of easy things to do to make your tests more reliable in terms of the questions and instructions. The third one is this. A test is more reliable if it is consistently marked. Now some types of tests are very easy 
to achieve this. A good example, of course, is the multi-choice questions, which we've looked at before. It's very easy to ensure consistency of marking. The answers are a simple letter. Every teacher has the same list of, of, of letters and can mark it in the same way. However, not all testing is as easy to mark as that. So one that poses particular challenges, perhaps, is the challenge of assessing oral performance. So what can we do if we want to assess oral performance and improve the reliability of the assessment? The first thing to do is to have shared criteria. If you think back to our Durian example, the reason that we all had different scores was because we had no established criteria. So let's say that we had said that the criteria were going to be colour and shape. That's all very well, but then you have to make sure that people have a shared understanding of what the criteria mean. After all, with a durian, what is the right colour? Is it yellow, green, brown? I don't know. Same with an apple. Is it green, yellow, red? People have to have a shared understanding of what the criteria mean before they start marking. So in order to achieve that, what we need to do is to make sure the markers are calibrated. So a calibration is when markers come together very soon before the actual marking and they discuss the criteria, they develop their understanding of what the criteria mean and how to apply them. And that's how we can enhance the reliability of assessment and oral performance. Right, now for the final one, which is a test is more reliable if it has a large number of points of assessment. A good example, perhaps, of where assessment is unreliable is often in when people are doing uh, assessing writing. I don't know how many times it happens that a teacher bases her or his assessment of a student's writing proficiency on a single piece of writing. Now that's not very fair, for obvious reasons. So you need to have writing, more than one piece of writing to be assessed. Similarly, if you are assessing reading ability, you can't just rely on one short passage with five multi-choice questions after it to give you a good, evaluate, a good evaluation, a good assessment of a person's reading abilities. So a large number of points of assessment is also crucial to ensuring reliability. However, a really important final point to remember is that an unreliable test cannot be valid. So you must attend to reliability if you have any hope of making sure your test achieves validity. And validity is a topic for another time. Okay, thank you very much.